Elvis is dead. Thousands gathered outside La Madeline Church for Johnny Haley. They credit AFP photo. It was a state funeral in all but name. Paris came to a standstill as millions paid an emotional adieu to France's biggest rock star, Johnny Halliday, on Saturday. Huge crowds thronged the streets of the French capital, chanting, Johnny, Johnny, as a parade of 700 bikers lent a rock and roll flourish to the solemn cortege along the Champs-Élysées. President Macron delivered an eulogy that moved many to tears. Johnny Halliday, the French Elvis, who died of lung cancer aged 74, was almost unknown in the English-speaking world, but in France he enjoyed a status comparable to royalty. The public outpouring of grief was reminiscent of Princess Diana's funeral. It was not just a farewell but a celebration of Halliday's life, as if he was performing one final concert before his burial in the Caribbean island of St. Bay de Lemie on Monday. But instead of the star singing, it was his legions of fans. Johnny was yours. Johnny was his public. Johnny was his country, said French President Emmanuel Macron to huge crowds credit Ludovic Marin AFP. They belted out the words, swaying from side to side, as his Ians played instrumental versions of his rock anthems such as, Something of Tennessee, AA homage to the American playwright Tennessee Williams. Some hurled bouquets of flowers onto the slow-moving hearse carrying his coffin, his wife Laetitia, 42, walked behind, wearing dark glasses in the bright winter sunshine, accompanied by the couple's two daughters. The crowd fell silent as the hearse drew to a halt in front of the Madeline Church. Halliday's coffin is carried from Eglise de la Madeline credit of BGT images standing on the steps of the 19th century church with a gigantic portrait of Halliday adorning its neoclassical facade. Mr. Macron was visibly moved. I'm almost expecting him to suddenly emerge from somewhere, on a motorbike. He'd begin the first, and you'd sing along with him. He would tell you that he loves you, the president told the crowd. Johnny was yours. Johnny was his public. Johnny was his country. Mr. Macron ended his address by saying, I ask you, wherever you are, so that he never dies, to applaud Monsieur Johnny Halliday. The crowd erupted into prolonged cheering and clapping. Many wept. The First Lady Bridget Macron hugged Laetitia Halliday. Motorcyclists ride their bikes during a popular homage to late French singer Johnny Halliday as his coffin is driven down the Champs-Élysées Avenue. The film stars Jean Dujardin, Marion Cotillard, Jean Reno and Carol Bouquet, a former Bond girl, were among a host of celebrities and showbiz personalities at the funeral. Nicolas Sarkozy, the former president and a big fan, attended with his wife, the singer and model Carla Bruni, and another ex-president, Francois Hollande and his actress girlfriend, Julie Gayette. Among the mourners were Halliday's other children, grandchildren and two of his ex-wives. Generations of French people have grown up with Halliday, who's formed it to their lives. Epitomizing French baby boomer's love affair with American popular culture, he came to symbolize the post-war optimism of Les Trente Glorieuses, Francis III, Glorious, decades after 1945 when it was admired for its culture, its cuisine and its cinema, with stars such as Brigitte Bardot. Halliday was not always adored. When he became a star in the 1960s, many older people saw him as a threat to his young fans, who would go into hysterics wherever he performed. People wait outside the Madeleine Church to attend Johnny Halliday's funeral ceremony in Paris, France Credit Thibault Camus AP Conservative France, led by the stiff General de Gaulle, was suspicious of Halliday's hip-swiveling antics and renderings of Anglo-Saxon rock. Giselle, 73, said, Johnny was my youth, my rebellion against my parents who didn't understand. Francoise, 29, said, he touched my generation deeply. He was older but we loved him and what he stood for. The bad boy of French rock metamorphosed into a national treasure over the years. He sold 110 million records and starred in films, but the gallicized version of rock and roll that led to him being nicknamed the French Elvis did not travel well. He never fulfilled his long-cherished dream of making it big in the country that inspired him. USA Today memorably described him as the greatest rock star you've never heard of, although he recorded his third album, Johnny Halliday Sings America's Rock and Hits, entirely in English, in Nashville in 1962. The funeral convoy for singer Johnny Halliday drives down the Avenue des Champs-Élysées credit best image Vanity News.com Born Jean-Philippe Smet in Nazi-occupied Paris in 1943, he decided early on that it wasn't a very rock and roll name. He changed it to Johnny Halliday, inspired by Lee Halliday, an American who married his cousin, became a father figure and taught him to play the guitar. Johnny Halliday's life was as rock and roll as his. He married four women and had numerous affairs. He survived a suicide bid, prolonged cocaine and alcohol abuse and car crashes. 
In 2009, there were premature reports of his death on an operating table after undergoing back surgery. Halliday inspired generations of fans credit Aurelian Morris art up three Getty images the surgeon was later attacked in a Paris street. To the British and the Americans, his S were pale imitations of rock classics, but in France, the man who turned rock and roll into French popular was a genius. When he moved to Los Angeles in 2010, becoming a neighbor of Tom Hanks and Ben Affleck, he said how wonderful it was to be able to walk around without being recognized. Abandoned as a baby by his hard-drinking Belgian father, an actor and dancer, his French mother gave him to an aunt, a cabaret entertainer, who brought him up. As a young man, Halliday idolized the singer Edith Piaf, although his ardor cooled when he finally met her and she tried to seduce him despite their age difference of nearly 30 years. In a country that reveres intellectuals, he was a rare working class icon. Like Diana, he touched people's lives, even those who did not like his. George, 48, said, I'm not a fan of Johnny. I used to hear his everywhere but I never listened to it. Now he's dead, I realize what a monumental figure he was, and what a gap he leaves.